Hello, friends of Tangled Hearts. Welcome to our channel, where stories of love and passion unfold. Let's begin our exciting journey into the world of human relationships. I felt that something was bothering Paula as soon as she crossed the threshold. This is what you acquire after almost 20 years of marriage. Is something wrong, Paula? I asked, watching her bustling around, preparing dinner. No, nothing at all, she replied, perhaps a bit too hastily. One more thing I had learned during my time with Paula was that you couldn't make her open up about something until she wanted to. Pressuring her would be a waste of time at best or lead to an argument at worst. I set the table and kept my mouth shut. Tomorrow evening, I need to go back to work briefly around 7, Bill, Paula informed me. I need to meet with some parents to discuss their children's lack of progress. No problem, I replied, recalling my conversation with Tim Brown earlier that day. Tim was the head technician at the middle school where Paula taught. He was in my car shop, getting an estimate for repairing a dent in his wing from a rather typical encounter with a deer that he explained how ridiculous it would be, in his opinion, to evacuate the entire school tomorrow evening while some special guys from Hazmat remove about four inches of asbestos insulation found on the heating pipe in the bus garage. The garage was nearly a hundred yards away from the school building, but the powers that be didn't want any problems arising from the removal of hazardous materials. Therefore, the decision was made to evacuate the school, including the night security staff, and now Paula tells me she has a meeting at the school that evening. It didn't make any sense. Paula never lied about anything, especially such trivial matters. And it dawned on me. This might not be so trivial. Where was she really going, and why? Why did she feel the need to lie? I pondered over it during dinner and much later. In the end, I made a decision and focused all my attention on spending the rest of the evening with my wife and our two teenage daughters. The next day, I invited my new employee, Steve Milko, to my office and explained what I wanted from him. Just follow Paula and see where she goes and who she meets, Steve. She hasn't met you yet, so she has no reason to suspect you. I know it's not part of your job description, but it would be a favor to me, and I'll pay you overtime for the time you actually spend on it, I added. That settles it, boss. Steve chuckled. I can easily recognize your wife from the photos with her and your kids. I'll tail her, and tomorrow morning, I'll give you a full report. I didn't like what I was doing, but I felt like I had no choice. Paula was lying to me. I needed to know why. In all the years we'd spent together, I had never suspected her of being untruthful. Now, those years of trust were shattered. Hey, boss, last night I did some pretty good work, but you won't like what I found out, Steve began, settling into a chair in front of my desk. Your wife met some shady guy at the Dewdrop in Hotel. They sat at a table in the far corner, ordered a couple of beers, and I took the nearby seat. Whoa, who's this, we, Steve? I demanded an answer. I thought you understood this was a delicate matter, and I didn't want the whole town to know. Damn, boss. How long have you been married? I can't just get up and leave at any time of day or night without telling my wife where I'm going and what I'm doing. If I try to lie to her, she'll figure it out, and then I'm in hot water. As soon as Marcy heard about my assignment, she wouldn't let me off the hook. It worked out well because she's got better hearing than I do, and she's damn smarter than me, although I'll never admit that to her, Steve confessed. Just keep telling the story, Steve, I replied tersely. When I sat down, I noticed some old magazines on the guy's table. I couldn't tell what kind of magazines they were, but I know what was in them, Steve continued. This jerk was blackmailing your wife, boss. He told her he'd show the photos in the magazine to you and your kids and even send some to your wife's directors if she didn't cooperate. How much money did he ask from her? What were those photos? How much time did he give her? I asked quickly. What did Paula tell him? Right away, boss. Remember, I'm just reporting. 
Don't shoot the messenger, okay? Steve replied. He told her he wants her to be his mistress and gave her until Monday to decide. Your wife begged him to take the money, but he just laughed at that offer. With all due respect, boss, he told her he wants to have sex with her whenever he feels like it. There were no options. I had to hold Marcy back from getting up and smashing the beer bottle over his coconut head. She was so fired up. I pondered what Steve had told me. Blackmail was easy to thwart. All it required was the truth. What truth could be so horrifying that Paula would even contemplate such a despicable proposition? Who was this miserable bastard? I suppose you didn't catch this guy's name. I asked hopefully. Boss, we got his name. It's Tom. That's what your wife called him, Steve replied. Well, damn. That rules out Dick and Harry, but there are plenty of lousy guys named Tom in the county, I grumbled. Can you describe what he looked like? A slow smile crept across Steve's face when he heard my question. I told you, Marcy is way smarter than me, boss. Before they ended their little conversation, Marcy had a brilliant idea, I stand up so she can take a photo of me with her phone. The only thing she missed was my beautiful face, and she snapped a picture of the guy blackmailing your wife. Here he is, Steve grinned, pulled out his phone, pressed a few buttons, and handed it to me. And here's the guy. The photograph wasn't the best, but I instantly recognized the man. It was Thomas Mann, a teacher since 2000, recently appointed as the deputy director of the middle school where Paula worked. He had almost missed out on that position because Paula had complained about what she considered inappropriate behavior between man and a female student last year. Then, he had warned Paula once that she would regret her actions. Clearly, he was trying to make good on that promise, there were many questions. What was he blackmailing Paula with? Why the old magazines? How would Paula react to this threat? Would she come to me for help? Could she give in to the blackmail? I knew the answer to the last question, only over my dead body. It was late Thursday. I had a few days to contemplate the situation and try to find a good solution. If it came to it, I would confront that fool on Monday and put an end to his dreams of sleeping with my wife or any other woman. I just felt that risking getting arrested was a bad idea. Whatever he used for blackmailing Paula would become public if I interfered. How could I thwart the blackmailer? That evening, Paula was quiet and preoccupied. Even our daughters noticed and asked her if anything had happened. Paula gave some unconvincing response about brainstorming new ideas for her book club literature. Somehow, the girls accepted it, that night, lying in bed, Paula was all over me. She gave me everything a man could ask for and would have continued if I were capable. Then she nestled her head on my shoulder, clinging tightly to me, and confessed her endless love. The events had forced her to realize that she could lose me. I saw that very clearly dot on the following day, as soon as I returned home, there was a knock on the front door. My eldest daughter, Chris, opened it and called me over. It turned out to be a courier with a package for me and another one for my daughters, Lisa. By the time I signed for it, Chris had already opened the package and was digging through its contents. They're old magazine pictures of naked women, and one of them is Mom. Chris shrieked. Let me see. Lisa insisted, snatching pages from her sister's hand. Wow. It's Mom, and she's showing everything. Look how young she is. She was beautiful. Chris gasped, peering over her sister's shoulder. Dad, when did mom take these photos? Why has she never shown them to us? Why did we receive them in some postal package? Your mother will be back soon. You should ask her these questions. For now, let's sit down, calmly look through all of this, and discuss what we think about it, I suggested. Twenty minutes later, Paula entered the front door with a sigh. It seemed as though the weight of the world rested on her shoulders. 
Then she noticed the three of us sitting on the couch with the photos spread out on the coffee table. Oh no. It was all she could muster when the realization of what we were looking at hit her. Tears streamed down her cheeks. Mom, come here and look at these photos we received recently, Chris insisted. You've never told us about this, and we're all very upset. I'm so sorry, Chris. Those terrible photos were a huge mistake I made many years ago. You weren't supposed to see them. Paula exclaimed, clearly distressed. Mom, you're so beautiful. We're upset that you never told us about them and never showed them to us. We want to make copies and hang them on the wall. I can't wait to show my friends how hot my mom used to be. Chris exclaimed. Yeah, mom. Dad says you were even more beautiful in real life than in these photos. Why didn't you tell us about them, mom? You're so cool. Lisa giggled, running up to her mother and hugging her. Paula was clearly taken aback for the second time in the last few minutes. Her tears stopped flowing as her daughters showered her with love and compliments. She turned her attention to me. Darling, you are still beautiful, I said to her, rising and approaching her. In fact, today you look even more attractive than many years ago, and that says a lot. I embraced her and held her close. She buried her face in my chest and let out a slight sob, then looked up at me. Do you hate me, Bill? Paula whispered. Do you still love me? More than ever, my dear, I laughed and kissed her passionately. Now that we've put all this nonsense behind us, Mom, come here and tell us everything about these photos, Chris insisted. We're dying to hear the story behind these magazine-worthy pictures. Were you a model or something? My father passed away when I was in my first year of college. Remember, I've told you about it, girls. I've already mentioned to you that for the first three years of college, I was supporting myself, my mother didn't have much money left. Yes, I posed for photographers who sent pictures to those magazines and those calendars that men enjoy perusing, these weren't exactly reputable family magazines. But they weren't truly bad either, Paula quickly added. By posing and working as a waitress on weekends, I managed to pay a significant portion of my college tuition. At the end of my sophomore year, an uncle I had never met passed away and left me over $10,000. I was able to stop posing. I continued working as a waitress and finished college the following year, Paula concluded. Why have you never told us about this? Why didn't you show us the photos, Mom? Chris asked. You look stunning. I hope to have a figure like yours in a couple of years. I think it's obvious, Chris. I'm not proud of what I did. I feel like I betrayed you, my children, and your father, even though I didn't know him at the time, and you two certainly weren't born yet, Paula explained. I was determined to get a degree in a decent job, no matter the cost. I put my future at risk by being so determined. I lived in fear that your father would someday find out the truth and leave me. I wouldn't have blamed him if he did. You seem to know very little about dad, Lisa laughed. He couldn't tear himself away from these photos and told us how incredible you are. He said we should be proud to have such a beautiful and smart mom. He said that. Paula exclaimed in astonishment. All these years, I worried he'd find out, and it turns out it excited him. Mom. Both girls squealed in unison. We're just little girls, Mom, Chris laughed. Save that stuff for the bedroom, please. Sorry, girls. Bill, will you help me unzip my dress? Paula asked, taking my hand and heading to the bedroom. Don't forget about our dinner, lovebirds. Chris shouted, clearly not buying the zipper excuse. The next day was Saturday. I called Steve's wife, Marcy, and asked if she would accompany me to a meeting with the school director, Mrs. Gwen Wilder. When I explained what I had in mind, she eagerly agreed. 
Then I called Mrs. Wilder at her home and arranged to meet in the afternoon, emphasizing how crucial it was, the three of us sat around a large table in Mrs. Wilder's office. I pulled out the envelope and placed it on the table. Mrs. Wilder, I want you to look at these photos, and then listen to a brief incident that Marcy overheard, I began. When you print them out, you will see that these are old magazine photos of my wife, Paula. And you will probably notice that she is posing nude. And she has a damn beautiful figure. Marcy exclaimed, flipping through the stack. I would really like to meet your wife. She's absolutely stunning. It seems strange to me that you've drawn my attention to this, Bill. Paula had an excellent reputation at our school. Her work was outstanding, and she received nothing but praise. Why risk showing me these provocative photos at all? Gwen Wilder asked. Because they exist, Mrs. Wilder. It means they could be used against her at some point in the future, and I'm afraid that future might be very near, I added. Paula helped pay for her college education by posing for these magazines. She's not particularly proud of them. They are what they are. You can decide whether they in any way violate her contract. She wants to continue working at your school, but she won't apologize or beg to keep her position. Furthermore, she won't be blackmailed by some cowardly idiot, I firmly stated. Now, Marcy will tell you what she overheard and is willing to testify under oath. Monday morning arrived, and Paula was clearly agitated. That bastard is expecting my response today, Bill. I told you about the deadline. I don't understand why he sent the photos to you and the girls before that deadline, Paula said thoughtfully. Maybe he thinks my fear of getting fired will be enough to make me comply with his demands. Perhaps that's the case, Paula, I agreed. Nevertheless, he would know that you would ask me who sent these photos, and I would tell you. It seems to expose him to some risk and reduces the likelihood of me agreeing to his proposal, she reasoned. Who knows what this crazy bastard is thinking, Paula? I asked. Don't try to understand a sick mind. You're probably right, but it just seems strange to me, Paula continued. I wonder if I'll find a job after today. Well, there's only one way to find out. I love you, Bill. Thank you for your understanding and forgiveness. I held Paula tightly, kissed her, and opened the door for her. Paula was working with several students on the script for the school play she directed every year. Today's rehearsal had ended, and the school was nearly empty. I stood behind the stage curtains, simply observing, around the fifteenth minute of the rehearsal, Mr. Thomas Mann burst through the door, swearing like a madman. His anger was directed at Paula. Oh, you pathetic bitch. I got fired because of you. I have enough wit to knock some damn respect into you. You're just a damn whore. He yelled, approaching Paula with a clenched fist. Unfortunately for him, I was prepared for something like this and stepped in front of Paula before he could reach her. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed the terrified student scattering. It worked perfectly for my purposes. Man was utterly surprised. I continued to restrain the madman right on the floor, then Mrs. Wilder and the school security rushed onto the stage. She halted abruptly, first looking at man's sprawled body and then at me. She simply nodded. Then she instructed her security to call 911 for the police and an ambulance. After they wheeled man away on a stretcher, cursing like an old sailor, Paula pulled me aside. Don't treat me like an idiot, Bill, she began. Too many things don't add up in this mess. It seems like you knew what to expect before it happened, and nothing surprised you. You were here because you thought Tom might come for me. When he met with me that evening to show the photos and attempt to blackmail me, he had only two magazines with four pictures. He didn't know about my other photos that were in that mailing. You and the girls received all the magazines and calendars I've ever been published in. Tom didn't have them all. I'm absolutely sure of that. 
The headmistress just told me that the testimony of a woman named Marcy Milko will prove that Tom tried to blackmail me for sex. The only Milko I've ever heard of is some guy you recently hired, but I've never met him. The only time Tom and I met regarding this was at Dewdrop. Now I remember that strange acting couple in the next booth that evening. What are you hiding from me, Bill? Paula demanded that I hoped that Paula would never connect all the dots. She was too smart to be deceived. I had no choice but to surrender to her mercy. Paula, you're not the only one living with a secret all these years. Please, listen and try to understand. I had just finished trade college and was working at my first job. Back then, it was common for guys to hang women's photos on the walls at the shop. They stuck them on their toolboxes and just about anywhere else they could fit. You were one of those pin-up models. I couldn't stop looking at you. I started buying all those magazines, searching for more photos of you, and reading everything I could find about you. In one of them, I learned that you were attending a big state college out east. As sad as it sounds, I began driving to the state capital on weekends, hoping that your college was there, and that I would see you in person. There was no real reason to even think it was the college you attended, or that you were even in college at all, I confessed. I had thoughts that I'd find you, and within an hour, you'd be naked in my arms. Unbelievably, I found you after a football game. Remember? It was your senior year, and you stopped being a model, or whatever you call it. Do you remember that it took me a full two years to finally undress you and hold you in my arms? I was head over heels in love with you long before that. I knew the school was closed that evening when you said you had to go back but were actually meeting man. My new guy at work was keeping an eye on you, and thankfully, he brought his wife Marcy along. They overheard everything and told me. I sent those photos to the girls and myself to make you stop being afraid and tell man to go to hell. Those photos were from my personal stash. On Saturday, I took Marcy to the superintendent and told her the whole story. I knew that if man tried to show her these photos, it would be the final proof that he was a blackmailer, and she would fire him. I was afraid that he might seek revenge on you later, so I kept close to make sure I didn't take my eyes off you, I explained. Why didn't you ever tell me that you knew about these photos when we first met or any time after, Bill? Paula asked. I was afraid you'd think I was a pervert or a stalker, and technically, I guess I was. As soon as I found you and realized that as beautiful as your body was, your soul was even better, I couldn't risk losing you. I was afraid that one day you'd find out that I'd spent eight months searching for you at Pennsylvania College, and you'd think I was crazy, I confessed. I just love you so much, Paula. Didn't you risk showing those photos to the girls, Bill? Didn't you realize it could make them hate me? Paula asked. No, it never crossed my mind. I made sure I was there when they looked at them. I knew they would never hate you. I also thought they would study my reaction to those photos and use it as guidance. Your girls will never be able to hate you, and neither I nor anyone else can make that happen. Their reaction was just as you saw it. They have a hot mom, and I have a fantastic wife. I replied. I'll be glad to hear how you'll tell the girls the rest of the story tonight, Bill, Paula said confidently. They know my secret, and now you'll tell them yours so that we no longer live in fear. I hope you won't scare them off. As we conclude our journey into the world of human relationships, please remember to subscribe, like, and share our content. Thank you for your support, and we look forward to seeing you in the next story.